In the vast landscape of academia, where every student is on the quest for knowledge and success, there lies a forever daunting challenge finding that one study method that works best for you. With so many different methods circulating online and in the halls of universities, it's incredibly easy to feel overwhelmed and lost in the vast sea of contradicting advice. One student swears by flashcards, while another by mind maps. We have already cancelled highlighting and reading stuff over and over, but how about those marathon study sessions? Maybe the benefits of short, focused bursts of learning are exceeding them, but who knows? But amidst the noise and confusion, one truth remains. Finding that one study method that resonates with you and with your unique learning style and needs is essential for success. And you are the one and only that can explore this. Hi everyone, I am Joanna. I am a fourth year mathematics student at the University of Oxford. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you all about my study methods and strategies for exams. As I've said in the intro, there isn't one universally best study method. So if something works for me, it doesn't really mean that it will work for you. But that being said, I think it's also very, very important to see if there is anything that we can steal from someone else and adapt to our own needs. So without further ado, let's talk about my preferred study strategy, which is pretty much a combination of active recall with space repetition and of course doing past papers. But wait, before we jump into the actual methods, we need to make it clear what we are working towards. So uni-level math exams, in my case, are a combination of bookwork, so stuff that we need to have memorized from the lectures, such as reproducing proofs and definitions, and new material, where we need to apply these um, concepts that we learned in lectures in a new context that we haven't seen before. So in my preparation for exams, I need to make sure I have covered all of my courses in great detail and memorize all of the definitions, the proofs, the theorems, the counterexamples, and all of that. But as a disclaimer, this is math, so when it comes to proofs, for example, you only really need to memorize the idea behind it or the outline, as everything else follows logically from the step above. But nonetheless, the same strategy applies in every case, I think. After I have a solid understanding of all of these, I will want to redo the problem sheets, which I have four of per course, and jump into past papers to see new ideas in play. If I have my exams at the beginning of June, I will start my studying for exams in mid-March or so. Again, disclaimer, this is the case for 8 to 10 difficult exams like I had in the last two years, so the timeline can always be adjusted to your own needs. For example, this year I only have three exams, so I don't really need to start studying this early. But yeah, again, very adaptable, very much up to you. All right. Now enough about logistics and let's get going with the actual strategy to tackle all of those. As mentioned before, I use active recall and space repetition to memorize the important things in the lectures or what we call book work. So what is active recall? Active recall involves actively retrieving information from memory rather than passively reviewing it. So instead of simply rereading or rewatching material, active recall requires you to actively engage with the content by attempting to recall it without looking at the source. Obviously, there are plenty of benefits of doing so. For example, actively recalling information from memory strengthens neural connections, making it easier to remember and retrieve later. Engaging with material through um, active recall enforces comprehension and understanding, leading to more effective learning. It's clearly true that it does take more time and more effort than just rereading the material, but it also yields greater results in terms of long-term retention and can be applied to various study materials such as textbooks, lecture notes and problem sets. Personally, I use this for lecture notes to be able to retrieve the bookwork parts in the exam. Now, a 60-page document containing a ton of maths can be very overwhelming, so I always start by breaking down each course into more manageable chunks, usually between 4 and 8 such sections per subject depending on its length and its difficulty. I then shove all of the titles of these sections in a spreadsheet that will eventually constitute my revision timetable. I only study one of these chunks per day. Here's where active recall really comes into play. Instead of relying on flashcards, I use 
a trusty notebook. After reading through everything on the current page or slide, I try to write down all of the important things on that page or on that slide from memory. So when I learn a new proof, for example, I would try to write it down completely from memory and then compare it with the actual thing, the actual source material, and seeing step by step if I have made any mistakes and correcting them. In a case when I don't perfectly write something down the first time, I will do this until I'm comfortable enough with the material and can actually move on. After a study session like this is over, I return to my revision timetable, write down the date on which I learned the section and give it a color corresponding to my confidence in the material. So we have green for good, yellow for okay-ish, and red for tiny bit struggling. Obviously, when you revise such a chunk of the material two months before the exam, you would for sure forget it by the time of the exam. And this happens really to the best of us. So how do we prevent this? Well, here is where space repetition comes into play. So space repetition is a technique that involves reviewing information at increasing intervals over time. So instead of um, simply cramming all of your study sessions into a very short period, space repetition spreads out your review sessions over longer intervals, with each review session occurring at strategically chosen times based on the forgetting curve. And this is the pattern of how quickly we forget newly learned information. This clearly helps prevent forgetting and promotes the so-called long-term retention of information. So obviously this just takes advantage of the spacing effect, which suggests that information is better remembered when studied over spaced intervals rather than in just one single continuous session. So back to my case, the learning stage, the initial learning stage, occurs when I do the active recall uh, phase that I just described before. So then after exactly two days, I do the first review. This is when I go over the material of the corresponding section again and write down all of the definitions and theorems from the section either in a notebook that I keep only like solely designed for definitions and theorems or on a piece of paper that I will then stick uh, to my wall and will inevitably glance at throughout the day. So I would then go back to my revision timetable and write down the corresponding date of my revision and just give it a color as before. Then I will simply go on uh, to review the material again after three days, then after four and after five. During these revision sessions, I would simply refresh my brain about the material in that section by reading it and reproducing only the most difficult concepts on a piece of paper. At this point, I will for sure have mastered the material, I'll have memorized everything thoroughly. I mean, I've reviewed it so much, I better just know everything about it at this point. Now, if there is still time before my exam, I'll go further with a revision after seven days, then another revision session after 10 days and so on. But I would definitely involve some prioritization at this point, by which I mean that I would prioritize newer topics that are still below that pre-established five-day revision timeline that I didn't get to spend that much time on. So if this is confusing, by this I essentially mean that whenever I have multiple topics to review on the same day, and it will inevitably all get very, very overwhelming, I will take a look at my revision timetable and see firstly, what topics don't have a green color in the latest revision? And then what topics haven't I revised in a while or are still below the five-day timeline? At that point, I would make sure that I refresh my mind on these first. So this definitely ensures perfect understanding of the material. And I for sure hope that I explain it well enough. I know it might be confusing because it's literally a study method that I designed. So it's not perfect. It's not bulletproof. It might not work for everybody and I might have done a terrible job at explaining it, so please do not hesitate to drop any questions in the comments below. And yeah, now we are ready to tackle problem sheets and past papers. Don't worry, this is definitely a lot more straightforward than the previous part. So for something like maths, where everything is based on critical thinking and your problem solving skills, practice is essential. As they say, practice makes perfect. So for this, I do just two things. The first one is to redo all of my problem sheets for every course. This is essentially our homework and do as many past papers as I can. This is the second main thing. So whenever I notice that I have done all of and I have revised all of the material corresponding to a problem sheet, I redo all of the questions in the problem sheet. So I make sure to know how to do all of the questions by myself, even if it means looking up the solutions the first time or asking a friend or even the professor. 
So yeah, definitely do not underestimate the value that you might get from the answer key if it's available to you. Even if you know how to do a question, definitely go through it. Maybe the teacher had a different method of solving a question. And it's just very, very important that you revise new ideas, you learn new things, because after all, this is what math is all about. Learning new methods to solve the same problem. Yeah, pretty much as simple as that for this part. But now here is my top tip. So below every question in the homework, write down the key idea of the solution. This way, come exam time, you'll only need to revise these key concepts and you'll basically know how to solve every question without having to write down anything. So the same strategy really applies to all of the past papers. I try to do at least four past papers for all of my modules, but this is highly dependent on the availability of the papers because, because maybe one of the courses is a new one, so there are no past papers available and so on. Again, if there is a new idea coming up in one of the solutions of a past paper question, I make sure to remember it as it may come in handy during the actual exam. And yeah, there you have it, my strategy for exam success during my time here at Oxford. So active recall and spatial repetition plus past papers have been the absolute game changer for me. And I hope that it can help you to, you know, just adjust your own uh, study method. Thank you so, so much for watching everyone. I hope you have found these tips helpful and found some strategies to try for yourself. As I said before, don't hesitate to ask me anything in the comments below or just suggest any new video ideas that you might be interested in watching, or might find helpful, might find entertaining, anything at all. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more university and studying and maths content. And yeah, one last thing, follow me on Instagram if you want, if you want to see more of me, definitely post more there. And yeah, just have a lovely, lovely rest of your day. Good luck if you have any exams coming up. I'm definitely rooting for you and see you very, very soon with a new video. Goodbye. I'm sick of